Uh, welcome back everybody to uh, our Revit 2016 series. Okay, so it's been a few days since I've, um, I've done one of these, um, but for, uh, if memory serves me right, um, previous uh, video we added some doors, okay, and we did that internally, externally, showed you how to uh, change the size of um, a garage door and things like that. Okay, so logic would dictate that we now got to um, add some uh, windows to the project. Okay, so to, to add windows, the command is pretty simple. Um, if we go to the top left um, into our architecture um, tab of the ribbon, we've got the window command there. If I um, hover my uh, cursor over there, you'll see that we get the command. It shows us the short key of W N. Okay, so either way, it's going to work. So W N. Okay, right. So for those who've uh, <coughs> been following following me, okay, what, one of the earlier projects for this was to actually create a template project, and in that um, template project, we inserted a few windows. Just to basically give us something to start off with, with the um, with any other new project. So and that's uh, in there <coughs> in the drop-down menu. So these are the windows that we've got currently sitting in our project. Okay. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now go to um, come to my browser. I'm going to go into uh, ground floor here. Double left click. Zoom all the way in. Okay, and I'm just, we're going to start placing some windows. It's a fairly simple process. Okay, so I'm just going to go. I'm going to go WN, and um, I'm going to click on uh, my drop-down menu. I'm going to try and find an appropriate size window for this guest room. So something around here. Okay, so w this is a, an Australian-style project, so we're going to use sort of Australian-style um, uh, windows, co commonly available for. Um, uh, some some of the volume built homes are actually you know, simple spec homes. Okay, so um, what have we got here? I've got a I've got an awning here. What's called an awning one LT, so it's a um, double pane window. Okay, so let's click on that one there. Um, I'm going to just double edit the type. Just double check it because it says 1812. I want to make sure that we get our measurements right. Okay, so it's 1800 watt high by 1200 across. Okay, that's fine. I'm happy with that. I'm going to go OK now. And um, we might just uh, well, we'll be a little bit lazy. And we'll just place one window in there. Look, if you look at those temporary dimensions, those blue dimensions, you'll see that they've equalized. So I'm going to accept that. Okay. So that's window, one window there. Um, so these windows will probably suffice um, on this uh, aspect as well. So we'll do the same there. Again, track in the middle. Okay, so it's equalised. <coughs> okay, so first things first, once we've placed these windows, okay, so in the very first, um, one of the very early tu tutorials I did, um, we placed windows, but we didn't do anything else with them. Okay, but when windows are placed in Revit, um, just go watch out for a few little things, okay, that appear in the properties. So just for starters, so if I just click on this window here, okay, have a look at the properties, okay, says the sill height's 900, levels ground floor, that's fine, okay, but then you come down to here to the bottom, okay, okay, and it's telling me here that the head height is 2700 which is um, pretty high considering that our ceiling height is 2700 so it doesn't leave an awful lot of space for lintels okay so what I can do is I can change that value there and this and this is what we call an instance parameter so I'm just going to change that to 2100 okay and that would um, apply only to this window because it's an instance prop property um, now the other one with these um, Australian style windows the only one now tees um, they have this little parameter here called bars. Okay, um, so if I just dump into the 3D a little bit, oh, there they are. Okay, so there's that window there. Okay, again, if I click on the 
Um, click on the window. Okay, we've got this little parameter here, it's called bars, and if I uncheck it, you see those little crossbars have disappeared. It's just a cosmetic thing, but, um, and it's it's only appeared in these styles of windows in the Australian library for Revit. Um, but it can potentially confuse the builder, because he'll think that they might be glazing bars. So, I, I, by default, um, I'll turn them off. Okay, so I'm just going to spin this around a little bit, okay. And there are our other two windows that we've placed so far. Okay, and as you can see that these two windows are con sitting considerably higher than the door. Okay, and this is a 2040 door, 2040 high. Okay, and these windows are sitting way too high. So, <coughs> and the thing is with Revit is that when we get to this stage, um, I find that working in 3D is pretty beneficial. Okay, so what I can do is I can grab that window. I can hold the control key down, okay, do my multi-select, left click, pick on that window there, okay, the properties are, um, are here, so I'm going to turn those bars off, so I'll left click on that little arrow there, and I'm going to change my head height to 2100 there, and click apply, well that's all done, okay, so there you go, so you can actually, let's see, you can do all of this in 3D as well, so, um, Rule of, rule of thumb is that you can do things like you can place the windows in ground floor plan, same as doors, come into 3D and your elevations and actually make sure that things are placed correctly and then you know jiggle them around as you need to. Anyway, back to our ground floor plan. Okay. Um, oh, just realized we need to chuck a door in. Okay, a little 820 door. Um, about there, okay, the laundry does need to, I do want some external access, so door in, door out, out to the back that way, okay, and we'll chuck um, componentry in here to fit out that laundry. Okay, okay, let's back, back to windows, back to windows. Okay, so click on my down list here. Um, okay, I'm just going to choose this FX1209. Uh, Again, double check, height 1200, width 900, um, we'll go OK, probably not the world's, actually we'll, we'll put that in, where will I put it? Actually let's take this one step further, OK, this FX1209, no good to me, so I'm going to rapidly change my mind, I'm allowed to, I work in the design industry, OK, um, I'm going to grab this warning 1L here, so I'm going to click on that one now. Okay, so this is an awning AW1212. Okay, so it's going to be 1.2 by 1.2 meters across. Um, if I want to chuck it in here, it's probably a little bit too big for a powder room for a toilet. So I'm going to um, create a new window using this as our base. Um, so I'm just going to go edit type. I'm going to duplicate. And rule of thumb is try to maintain, keep the originals. Okay, so now I've just gone duplicate, rename it, so it's an 0606 now, um, which was, you know, 600 by 600 mil. So I'm just going to change that to that, and I'm going to change the height to 600. Okay, ooh, not 6,000, that's a very big window. Okay, so you see that the rough height and the rough width change automatically, so you don't have to stress too much about them, that's a nice little thing that Revit does for us. And now I'm going to go OK, and I'm going to chuck that window in there, OK, and um, for argument's sake we'll, I'll place one in the laundry as well, it's nice to have a bit of glazing in there. OK. Now let's chuck another couple of windows in. I think we might use these ones again. Uh, I believe that they were the awning 1812. Are they going to fit? Yes, they are. Okay, so it's unfortunately it's a little bit boring this. Okay, but again, click on those. So I can control key, multi select in this view, uncheck my bars, and 2100 and apply. Okay. Jump into 3D. Okay, those work. Those work. 
these do not. Okay, again, same process, so we get into a bit of repetition here. Okay, multi select, go into my properties, remove those bars, and change the head height to 2100 and apply. Okay, now if I go into my ground floor plan, something really horrible has happened. Okay, I can see that window, I can see those windows, I can't see that window. Well, these two windows. Oh, but if I hover over, I can see an outline there. Okay, this is something called um, the cut plane. Okay, in the view range. So um, it's probably worth dipping into this um, right now, just so that we can get this quick fix. Okay, so the view range is basically where we set the view of the of our um, project in the Z elevation, okay, rather that, you know, we've got X and Y's but we haven't looked up and down, okay, so we modify the view range, the overall view range by clicking into our view space, okay, we'll scroll down to where we see um, extents here in the properties and we click on view range and we just hit the edit button, okay, Okay, and here's, so this is the view range, we're not going to go into this too much depth, okay, but this is the top, okay, so we're sitting at, the, so we're in the ground floor plan, the top of the camera um, is sort of, you know, around about 2.3 metres high, and then we have this cut plane, okay, and this is where it's actually creating this sort of, se a, a vertical section, okay, and it's 1.2 metres high, that is below where this window is and where this window is, so it's, it's physically not cutting these windows. Now I'm hoping if I go say, if we change that to about 1700 and apply, there we go, we can see it now. Okay, and we can go OK. So you can see those two windows, it actually allowed us to see a little bit more of the stairs, which is quite a nice thing as well. Okay, right, so that's, that's, that's enough windows for the ground floor. Okay, we're going to go to the upstairs um, first floor plan now. We're going to do a similar sort of process. Okay, windows. I'm just going to spit a few of these in. You guys can obviously take your um, take your time and and uh, with uh, what you want to do. Okay, being upstairs, we want to use probably awning windows or windows that we can't open too far. We do have health and safety to think about. Okay, so I'm going to um, do the same thing here, AW, my 1212, I'm going to create a new one here, um, um, probably just going to call it an 1810, okay, um, I want my width to be 18, about 1.8 metres across, and I want my, head, my height to be about that. Okay, so I've probably named this incorrectly, but that's uh, that's all right for now. Hit OK. Right, yeah, for me that's much better. Okay, so not a much bigger window. Um, I think we had a bedroom there. Um, put a couple of windows in there. And I uh, might just chuck a couple of windows in there, um, maybe just one in there for prosperity's sake. Okay, let's just do a quick uh, whip around in the 3D and see what's happened. There we go. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do now is that I can do a multi-select again. Okay, so control key, select that. Now while these are selected, I can still orbit around in 3D, so I can go shift, middle mouse, keep button down, and scroll around. Okay, just make sure you don't hit the left left key, and otherwise you're going to miss them. Okay, keep holding that control key down, and we can select all of those windows. Okay, if I zoom around, there you go. You can see all four. So um, you do have to be, yeah, you. Know, you'd, be a little bit dexterous when it comes to using Revit, okay, you, and you do learn to be, a, you know, hold two or three mouse keys down plus another couple of other keys on the keyboard to make it all work. 
Okay, but <coughs> excuse me. Okay, but there's the there's the bones of the, the, the drawing. Okay, there's probably a couple of windows to add in there. Um but we really you know, for for the purposes of a training tutorial we don't really need to do go into that right now. Okay. Alright, so we're gonna leave it at that. Um I bid you adieu. Um and um We'll see you next time. So probably in the next video, we're probably getting pretty close to starting and adding to things like componentry. Um, we want to fix these gaps here. Um, you know, get some columns in here if we don't want to cantilever that. So a whole range of things that we can do. Okay, so there's plenty, plenty more to go. Okay, guys, we will see you later.